Here they come from the 71st Spider Squadron. Let's listen to the sound of freedom. pilot's dream. It's amazingly agile, it climbs like a rocket, and it has one of the best combat radars of the world. It can detect and destroy enemies way beyond the vision of its pilot, or BVR, beyond visual range. At the same time, the maneuverability makes the F-15 a ferocious dogfighter. When fighting gets close and dirty, even today, more than 30 years after its first flight, Few aircraft can match the Eagle in combat. With a maximum speed of two and a half times the speed of sound, or Mach 2.5, that's about 1,875 miles per hour. The F-15 Eagle is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-100 afterburning turbofan engines. Each of those engines generates over 23,000 and nearly 24,000 pounds of thrust. Let's listen as we have Captain Chino Rumba coming through. He's going to put the power to it and do a low approach. Going to beat up the field for us right now. like the Raptor or the F-15 E-Strike Eagle and you see a horn, an orange glow coming out of the, uh, the, uh, the tailpipes, that means the F-15. He's using the big wing area 
plus the speed brake that you jaw saw just come up on the back of the aircraft, and the entire fuselage to help slow the airplane down. It is, is it, it is a technique called aerodynamic braking. It's a big airplane. It empty, empty the F-15 weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 28,000 pounds. So easily it's flying at 30,000 pounds right now, uh, even uh, when it's burning down its fuel. That's a lot of airplane to stop on two small wheels with two small brakes. And so they save the brakes, make it easier on the maintainers so they don't have so many hours fixing, doing brake jobs on these things. So that's aerodynamic braking. You'll see the F-15E Strike Eagle that, do that. You will see the F-22 Raptor do that. You will not see the Navy's F-A-18 Super Hornet do that because it is designed for landing on the deck of a carrier. And when they do their landings, they plant it, all three wheels, really hard on the ground. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Coming up in just a moment. We're going to see a young gentleman, gentleman by the name of Sean Carroll fly an airplane that actually was built in Russia, designed by the Russians, flown by the Russians during World War II, and that's all coming up here in just a couple.